Good evening, and welcome to the at-large portion of the 2023 Waterloo Municipal Debate, sponsored by Northern Iowa Student Government in partnership with Women of Action, Cedar Valley Activate, and the Cedar Falls Waterloo Branch of the University of Women, American Association of University Women. Uh, for the at-large portion, we will have uh, Ashley Chappelle, Jonathan Greider, and Steve Simon. As a reminder, oh, and Corey Holmes. I'm so sorry, Corey. As a <laughs> reminder, you will have 90 seconds for introductory comments and then 60 seconds for uh, any uh, introductions of the, excuse me, comments to the questions. 30 seconds for any rebuttals, and 60 seconds for closing remarks. Uh, Ashley Chappelle, we will start with you for introductions. Hello, I just want to say thank you guys for having me here. And um, I wanted to introduce myself, Ashley Chappelle. Um, I am new to Waterloo. I've been here for like a year. Don't, don't get it twisted now because I'm new. <laughs> but I have been for familiarizing myself with the area, the city, and I'm a mother of six, okay? And I have a big family, a wife, and I'm a content creator, full-time content creator. I did CNA, phlebotomist, bartender, culinary arts. Um, I did a little bit of everything, cosmetology, everything I could think of. I'm really a hands-on person with helping people, and I love to do what I do. So I thank you guys for giving the opportunity to get to, get to know me. Hello, everyone. My name is Jonathan Greider, and I want to thank uh, Northern Iowa Student Government, as well as our moderators, Ms. Kuiper and Dr. Renfro, for tonight's uh, debate. Um, I have been privileged and honored for the last uh, three and a half years to represent Waterloo on the city council. Um, in addition to being a city councilor, I'm a father of two rambunctious girls, uh, and I also teach high school social studies at West High, where I get to work with some of the most amazing young people in the state and in the world, honestly. Um, I have worked on city council for the last three and a half years to make Waterloo a better place for everybody. I have fought tough fights, not because they were easy, but because they were the right thing to do. I have a record of getting things accomplished, starting from the very beginning when I was first sworn in, in January of 2020, in working to address some of the biggest challenges facing our community. And I have worked diligently these last three and a half years to make myself open, transparent, and accessible to folks through a variety of means, whether it's answering over 10,000 phone calls in my three years, more emails than I could safely count, uh, hosting over 48 constituent or public forums, as well as attending individual events for folks that needed help over 118 times in my time. Tonight, I'm gonna lay out why it's not enough to say what you want to do, but to show a record of doing things. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Corey Holmes. And again, thank you all for having me. Thank you to the community for coming out uh, to be a part of this. This is very important as you're able to hear us and you're able to see us, uh, put a face with the name and hear where we're coming from. And thank you to our facilitators here, moderators tonight. Uh, again, my name is Corey Holmes. I'm from here at Waterloo, born and raised in Waterloo, Iowa. Grew up on Cortland Street. And I was here, um, the son of a mother, who was an educator for 40 plus years at the University of Northern Iowa. My father was a preacher for 40 plus years, a pastor for 30 plus years. And I graduated from Northern University High School in 2008. Unfortunately, my school is not there anymore. And you may be wondering, why did he grow up in Waterloo and go to school in Cedar Falls? Well, because my mother was very big with education. Education was important to her. And Malcolm Price Laboratory School was connected uh, to the University of Northern Iowa. And because she taught there and went to the university, she wanted us to have that educational experience as well. In 2008, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, graduated from Clarkland University. Also in Atlanta, I served formally as law enforcement. I have a background in law enforcement for nearly a decade, and I'm returning back home. I'm here now, and I'm running for city council because when I returned back home a couple years ago, there was a great divide in our city. There was a great divide within our community, and I'm here because I believe that unity is where the community needs to be. I would like to also thank the moderators, the people that put on the debate. Thank you very much. Um, just a little bit about myself. I'm born and raised here in Waterloo. Grew up on the east side in Greenbrier, great neighborhood. 
Um, wait, I had I like to tell people I had 57 parents because we all looked out for each other. Uh, it was a great time back then, and, and times are different now. But uh, it, it's too bad because I had a good childhood. Um, I uh, went to Columbus, graduated in 84. <clears throat> uh, played a lot of slow pitch softball at Hoeing Race, Hoeing Race Softball Complex. I met a lot of friends, thousands of friends. Uh, got into the dental lab business. Um, I make teeth for dentists. Uh, there's a good chance there might be a few of them in, in your mouths now. Um, I've done that for, for uh, 37 years, uh, 20 years as an owner. So um, I, I think I can bring a little business sense. I know a business in a city run differently, but there are some advantages to dealing with people. Um, I, I, I touch back on, you know, I used, I lived in Waterloo. It's a great place. I want to kind of give back to the city that's been good to me. Um, obviously, it's given me plenty of opportunities, which I hopefully I have taken care of or taken advantage of. And I, I've got three kids, one that's goes to West High. And, uh, and I want Waterloo to be a good place for future generations. <clears throat> All right, let's jump right in. A recent analysis by 24-7 Wall Street ranks uh, the Waterloo Cedar Falls area as the sixth worst place to be a black American, which is an improvement over where we were before. But still, what would you do to improve that? Start with Ashley. I would honestly be more hands-on. I would really want to get into the community and honestly show the community what we can do as a community like uh, within all of us. Um, and honestly, be the voice. Honestly, would not just work in office, but out of office. So um, being on council for the last four years, I've, I've worked um, very diligently with many of our African-American leaders in their African-American communities, um, whether it's making sure that um, the city uh, represents them and that they feel heard uh, at the table of power, because our city is wonderfully diverse, but everyone deserves to have an equal chance um, to have a say in how their government works. We have to invest in housing. We have to address fundamentally the fact that there are houses that are not safe for people to live in, but that's the only opportunity for housing that they have. We have to address that by hiring more rental inspectors, which we did. We have to address poverty by investing in our neighborhoods and getting back to the basics, making sure that folks can access food and their basic staples close to their home. We have to invest in transportation. Um, you should not need to own a car to be able to get where you need to go. And we need to invest in quality of life projects equitably across the city, not in just some places. As a pastor here in the community, as well as an individual with prior law enforcement experience, um, I have heard over the years and even in my time in Atlanta, Georgia, I have heard of those uh, statistics that you're stating and that you're bringing forth. And I believe um, even as a psychology major, as my background, I believe that the mind is very critical. And I believe that our intentions are very intentional and critical as to where we are as human beings and how we are and how we exist. And within the community that we live in, uh, we're so quick to, to look at what's wrong. We're so quick to look at uh, the issues, but the reality is we have to find ourselves looking at the source of the problem. And a lot of times the source of the problem simply can be resolved by just sitting down and talking with someone. Uh, we have gun violence. Gun violence is something that needs to definitely be addressed, and it's very critical uh, as we hear about uh, the African-American um, culture. We hear about the males and those individuals. Gun violence is a problem, and guns are a reason why any of us believe that. Thank you. Mr. Senator? Please repeat the question. Waterloo Cedar Falls was ranked the sixth worst place to be in Black American in a recent analysis by the publication 24-7 Wall Street, which is an improvement. Um, but how will, what will you do to improve that? Do you have, was it worse how many years oh, ago? Do you, um, have, do you have that information? It was like it was six, six, it was six, six last years, year, um, but like then, six. It used to be number one. Six years ago or so, it was number one. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, I think... I think any time a, a city has to deal with racism, and that's basically what this is, um, I think you got to start with the children. Um, when I was a kid, like I said, when I grew up in Greenbrier, I didn't see color. I seen people. I seen friends. Um, 
we ran around together. We played together. We we beat each other up. We you know we picked each other up when they were down. Um, like I said, I had I had multiracial um, fathers and and mothers to me. I mean, they'd do anything for me. I think I think we can focus on things that make Waterloo better. And I think you got to start with the kids. I think you got to make the kids, I, you know, let the police and the fire know that they're they're wanted and they you know they've got a place here in the city. And I think you know there's opportunities in those those positions. Those kids are going to grow up, and I want them to stay in Waterloo. I don't want to have that stigma. So I think as a councilman, I would try to do the best I can for all the city's residents. <clears throat> um, you mentioned. Um gun violence, and Waterloo has started some initiatives um, to prevent gun violence, but what would you do to further that goal of lowering the amount of gun violence? Well, um, I have been very proud over the last year to be the chair of the Safe Neighborhoods Commission, um, which was the commission that was formed unanimously by the council to address this issue. Um, I've been out meeting with community members uh, and I am very pleased that we will be making a recommendation uh, in a work session on November 6th about what we can do to address this issue. Because as the chief of police says, we can arrest these folks, but that's not getting at the fundamental core. Fundamentally, the, the outline that we are going to offer not only holds folks accountable when they break the law, but ends root and stem the causes of what makes gun violence viable in the first place. And that means looking at opportunities. That means making sure that these young folks have transportation to places that they need to go. It means supporting parents. It means investing in our neighborhoods. It means making sure that our housing is safe and that our schools lift up our children. It's not going to be an easy lift. It's not going to be solved overnight, but I am committed to continuing the work that I've done to end gun violence fully in this community. Same question, Corey? Yes, um, gun violence is very important and uh, it's very dear to my heart, especially as a former law enforcement officer in the big city. And you name it with gun violence, I've seen it. Been on scene, been a first responder. I've seen homicides. I've seen individuals shot. I've seen individuals transported to the hospitals. I've had to go to the hospitals with them. Uh, and so gun violence is very, very important. As I said, as, as a psychology major, for me, the, the mind is very, very important. Uh, when we look at gun violence, when we look at those issues that we deal with, a lot of those issues stem from a deeper root and a deeper source. They stem from upbringing. Some of them can stem from background. Some of them can stem from, stem from lack of support in the household. Uh, so there are a lot of different avenues that we must be willing to explore. And again, we must address gun violence from a bold, bold standpoint and perspective. Gun violence is something that we cannot address from a distance, but we have to be willing to be upfront, personal, and approachable with it. Once again, please repeat the question. <clears throat> oh, that's me. Sorry. <laughs> um, so Waterloo has started some initiatives to um, prevent gun violence. How would you further the goal of um, eliminating gun violence in the community? Well, like I've said before, and I'll, I'll continue to say it, I think it starts with the kids. Uh, and I've done a ride along with the police. Uh, they, they heavily patrol the, the areas where there's potentially more gun violence than others, where there's more seizures of guns. Uh, they're doing the best they can to do a great job. Um, I think we need to get those kids to, like I said before, um, respect the police officers' jobs, respect their elders, respect everybody else, respect the lives of other people. Um, I think it goes back to to educating children because that's where it starts. I, the average age of the gun apprehension, I believe, has dropped two or three years. I think they're 12 and 13-year-olds that are running around with guns in town. And, uh, that's got to stop. And that takes a community. That takes all of us. we got to work together. Like I said, we didn't have that when we were kids because we looked out for each other. And I think we need to get that community spirit back in our world, and that will help. <clears throat> um, well, where I come from in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, gun violence is like literally a regular. So, what I think really should be done is we get more hands on with the community 
and the youth, because the youth is our now and our future. So if you get out and let them know that there is somebody outside the home and outside of school that cares about them, give them time, get to the community and get to know people and find other things for people to do and get active with and honestly just be hands on with people more so up close in person, you know, asking them more so the community is what we can do as a community because it also take a village to raise a child. So a lot of child around here that's just lost. And again, like Corey was saying, it starts with mental. So mental health awareness would definitely be a big one for me. On that note, um, 79% of gun-related deaths in Iowa are due to suicide. What resources or community outreach would you make and advocate for in your elected position? Corey? Mm -hmm. That's very, very touching and very, very heartfelt and even saddening to hear that. But I would definitely partner with the, um, the ATF. I think that's very critical. I would partner with the uh, Waterloo Police Department. Of course, as a pastor, I'd partner with our churches. And I would even partner with our schools. We'd partner with our schools as well uh, to get education out there. Um, it, it's, it's sad. And, you know, there's, there's ghost guns out there. There are ghost guns out there. And we also need to get with our legislator. We need to get with uh, those that are in Des Moines. We need to increase the background checks. You know, a lot of people are able to get guns at a very, very um, – at a rate that is very, very easy to, uh, to obtain. And I believe that's very critical and important. And also we need to make sure that we're uh, securing our weapons in our homes. And I think that it starts with community forums, uh, again, at our churches. If we don't wanna go to churches, we can find ourselves having a neutral location, neutral place, but again, uh, gun violence and it's very critical and suicides are coming from individuals obtaining guns that have not been locked and secured properly. Can you ask you to repeat the question again? Um, so nearly 80% of gun-related deaths in Iowa are due to suicide. What would you do in your elected position to help that situation? Um, I, I, I'm a gun owner. Um, I've taught my child how to shoot a gun. She's 15. My older kids shoot guns. Um, I want them to be able to handle the guns safely because... There's not, only, there's not only suicide, there's accidental shootings, so I, I want my daughter to know that. But I taught my daughter and my other, my other two kids specifically to value life. And the first life you need to value is your own. So, you know, mental health is kind of a big issue. I mean, I see more mental health issues now than I think when I was a kid, you know, as I was growing up. So I think there's some things that we can do for that. Um, but I, I believe, I believe teaching self-respect and respect of others, that's where you start with you know, having a confident child that they don't have to go down that path of, of thinking about suicide. And that's, that's very difficult. Um, I, I haven't you know, witnessed that myself personally, but from what I've seen and read and, and see, it's a very difficult path to, to get out of it. So. <clears throat> Um, as a person that suffered from postpartum depression myself, I can say suicide don't just come from guns. It can lead to the guns to suicide, but also we got to catch what's, what's really wrong, you know what I mean? So, again, my biggest thing would be mental awareness and prevention, like being out here and also seeing the signs of others and paying attention to our community as a whole, you know what I mean? So I think me personally, I will start within my community and see what I can do to reach and reach out to people. Also getting the extra line open for people that just don't have nobody to talk to, somebody that when they get to that matter, they can just call, you know, and reach out to somebody that is there for them. And if I can't help them, I can show them and lead them and also partner with other organizations that can help me. Thank you. Jonathan? So I'm very proud to be uh, just recently endorsed um, as a gun sense candidate from Moms Demand Action. And so one of the things that I want to continue to do um, in addressing uh, the issue of gun violence is work on educating the public about safe storage. Um, there are programs that we can implement in the community, working with our partners in the schools, to help parents recognize the importance of securing guns. In addition, I've been very proud to support the Waterloo Youth City Council, which was able to get a law through so now that every student in a school in Iowa has the mental health hotline on their school ID. That was something started by a group here in Waterloo. In addition, we have to fundamentally address mental health. 
Uh, we have to work on making sure that there is more mental health facilities that are open. That means working with our state partners. It also means standing up for portions of our population that are more susceptible to suicide and anxiety and depression simply because of who they are. And I'm going to continue to stand up for everyone in Waterloo. Great. <clears throat> oh, is it time for our final question? We don't have time. We don't have time. <laughs> okay, closing I was statements. Gonna remember this. <laughs> we don't have time to go through another. So people do closing statements. Okay, yeah. Um, whose turn is it? I guess. Steve. <laughs> You want to go first? You want me to ask you to repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Um, so, so basically, a lot of my friends, I've got, I've got a lot of friends. Uh, like I said, I've lived here 57 years. I, I hang out. I'll admit I go to bars. I shoot pool. I shoot golf. I play golf not very well. But, uh, you know, I've, I've made teeth for tens of thousands of individuals and and. and done a lot of things in the city and I'm very proud of the fact that I love Waterloo. I love the people in Waterloo. I mean, I'm not pounding on doors. I love getting the responses that they give me and they, and they give me a lot of ideas. Uh, it's kind of funny when one, one person will say they hate the roads being fixed all the time and then I'll go down the next door and they'll say they hate the roads. You know, they're too rough. I wish they'd be fixed. It's like, so you, you've got people on both sides of everything. But uh, basically what I want to do is, is tell everybody that you're getting a lifelong Waterloo resident that's proud of Waterloo. And if you vote for me, you're going to get somebody that's going to sit up here and have your best interests at heart. <clears throat> well, first off, I want to say I'm not from Waterloo again, <laughs> but I do want to be home of Waterloo. Like, Waterloo has literally been at home to me and my family. We recently was traveling. Um, we've been to Las Vegas, Texas, and Waterloo was, like, our next step. And, like, it was close to the home, which, again, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So being here and actually seeing and getting into the community and seeing what's going on, it made me want for my heart to actually want to be more so of the hand, of the helping hand of Waterloo. So, again, I hope everybody understands that I am running to honestly help our youth to better the the community to honestly bring the community back together where it's not so diverse and everybody can actually get along and communicate and we also can come into a common ground what can help us all and be here happy and make this home and make it feel like a happy home and bring love to here not just being many about this but some love too <laughs> so um, if I am so lucky to be elected to another term on the city council, folks will know that they are getting a, a fierce advocate, someone who is going to rise to meet all the challenges that face our city and is going to seize all the opportunities for our future. I have a proven track record of accomplishing things that I set out to do. I have a proven track record of standing up for those who often are denigrated, ostracized, or demonized. I have a track record of bringing as many people into a coalition to make a better Waterloo that represents all of Waterloo. And so with a vote for Grider, you are voting for a better Waterloo for everybody. Don't forget to vote November 7th. Thank you. In closing, I would like to say to everyone, thank you so much for coming out to be in support of this and to witness this. Again, uh, for some of you, you may say that I'm new to politics, but being a public servant is something that is not new to me. I've been a public servant for quite some time. And I would like to say that we together can make a change in this community. There are a lot of great things that are going on here, but we can always improve and make our community a lot better. Uh, gun violence, law enforcement, affordable housing, affordable child care, uh, leisure services, investing back into our community, our roads being repaired, all those things are important to me. And I believe that together, as a Waterloo resident, we can make some great things happen. So again, thank you all so much. We do want to remind you all to come out and vote Tuesday, November 7th. My name is Corey Holmes. You see me on the ballot. Go ahead and check that box. God bless you all, and we love you. Thank you all. And that has been the 2023 Waterloo Municipal Debate. Uh, before we end the night, I'd like to give big thanks to our moderators, Jamie Wemfro and Maria Kuyper, for taking time out of their evening. I will also like to thank the City of Waterloo for allowing us to use the City Hall Chambers tonight, as well as the Waterloo Community Television for recording this debate for us. 
Uh, and thank you to everyone else for attending this debate. And please remember to vote on Tuesday, November 7th. Thank you.